give me some of the, the short and the long-term symptoms of these, the glucose Spikes. roller coaster. And yeah. now I want to know what glucose is because that's probably a better place to start. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think symptoms is cool because most people will recognize a lot of these in their own lives. So cravings is the most common one. Then unsteady energy levels. So feeling tired throughout the day, maybe you have chronic fatigue, maybe you need a lot of coffee to get through the day, you know, maybe playing with your kids is, exa is exhausting, picking up the groceries is exhausting, just like you're tired, you know, you're eating, but you're tired. Very common symptom. And we'll get into why that happens maybe in a bit. Those are the two most common short-term ones. Then- What about memory? Ah, that's a good question. So the more glucose spikes you have, the more the neurons in your brain are gonna work like less well. So one of the most common symptoms of glucose spikes on the brain is actually brain fog. Uh, okay. So feeling like you can't really remember stuff too well, um, everything's a little bit blurry. That's basically your neurons not being able to communicate as quickly as they usually do. And it's often felt as brain fog. But then there's a huge link between glucose and long-term brain problems like dementia and Alzheimer's. Some people even call Alzheimer's type three diabetes because it's so linked to your glucose levels. So the brain, if you want your brain to be in optimal top shape, steadying your glucose levels is really key. What if I want to sleep like a baby? Yeah, absolutely also. So the more spikes you have, the less restful and deep your sleep will be. So if you want to sleep like a baby, absolutely. If you're somebody going through menopause and you want to reduce menopause symptoms, also looking at your glucose levels is a very important place to start because the more spikes we have, the worse those symptoms get. Talking about hormones, there's also a huge link between glucose levels and fertility. So in females today, you know, there's more and more rates of infertility. There's something called polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is more and more common. That also is extremely linked to your glucose levels. And again, the first place to look if you want to fix your hormones is balancing your glucose. Other stuff, and there's a lot of symptoms here because glucose affects every single system in the body. So there's not a single disease or condition that doesn't get better when you balance your glucose levels, essentially. But I'll go into a few more um, examples. Skin. So inflammation is a direct consequence of glucose spikes. And on the, on the skin, inflammation can be seen as acne, eczema, psoriasis. I have no idea. You know, there's two words that have just exploded into like popular conversation mm. over the last, I, I'm going to say 12 months, but I, you know, I'm not that deep to, to know how long this conversation has been happening. But one of those words is the word glucose. I've just seen it everywhere all of a sudden. And the second word, which I've seen even in more places, is that word you just used, inflammation. Yeah. What is inflammation? Inflammation is a, is a stress response from your body mm -hmm. that is supposed to help you and clean things up. So for example, when you get sick, when there's a virus or a bug that's attacking you, your body essentially creates inflammation to combat that enemy. The problem is inflammation now often happens against your own body or just like chronically at a low level and that causes many 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 issues so it's a state of stress of the body and it happens in all of us it can it can happen in all of the cells in our body and absolutely and the, today three out of five people in the world will die of an inflammation based disease three out of five three out of five the world health organization calls inflammation like one of the biggest problems of our century it's basically just a way to say that your body is not healthy. There's problems going on within. Because inflammation can be caused by so many things, you know, by like smoking, alcohol, glucose spikes, stress, environmental toxins. It's just like a state of unhealth of your body, if you will. And so on the skin, the most common sort of visible consequences of that inflammation are acne, psoriasis, eczema. Um, and then talking about skin. So the more glucose spikes you have in your body, the faster you age. And that shows on your skin as wrinkles, but also on the insides, things slowly deteriorate and break down. And there's a funny uh, image for this. So from the moment you're born, your body is slowly cooking. You slowly cook, let me explain, <laughs> like a chicken in the oven from the moment you're born. And then when you're fully cooked, you die, <laughs> your face. <laughs> This concept of cooking is basically aging and it's the technical term for it is called glycation. And the more glucose spikes you have, the faster this process happens. So if you wanna age less quickly, 
And if, you know, when you look at two people who are 65, one is clearly younger than the other, like biologically, right? And you can affect, you can impact how quickly that aging is going on. One of the ways being through reducing your glucose spikes. Okay, and then long-term, we talked about type 2 diabetes being the leading sort of long-term condition linked to glucose levels. So the more glucose spikes you have, the faster you'll develop prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. And then finally, I also mentioned that glucose levels are linked to cancer and heart disease. So essentially, to, to give you a summary, if you have a lot of glucose spikes, things are not going to go super well. You're going to have lots of symptoms short-term, medium-term, long-term. If you currently feel, if you're like, I could, I could feel better than I do, you know, which most of us probably feel, then balancing your glucose levels is a really, really freaking important place to start. It's like the, the base, it's the base layer of your physical and mental health. It's really key. But most of us don't have that sorted. So to summarize, yeah. there's short and long-term symptoms there <clears throat> that I've written down here. Short-term symptoms, cons if, you, if we aren't able to flatten our glucose levels, yeah. then we face the chance of having constant hunger and cravings, chronic fatigue, poor sleep, colds. We talk, you talked a little bit about the immune system and the implications there. Mem brain fog, you described it as mm -hmm. long-term brain fog. Um, Longer term effects, acne, aging, arthritis, Alzheimer's, dementia, cancer risk, mental health, infertility challenges. Yeah. And to be clear, like glucose is not everything, right? There's many things that matter in our health, like emotional connection, medical care, you know, sleep, stress, exercise. But learning to balance your glucose levels is like learning. OK, I have a fun, I have a fun uh, image to use for this. It's like imagine you're walking into an airplane and before you go sit, to your, at your seat, you kind of peek into the cockpit and you're like, whoa, lots of buttons in that cockpit on the ceiling, on the sides, there's all these levers. You're like, oh, I'm happy I don't have to fly this plane. You're the passenger, right? And you're happy the pilots know what they're doing. In the case of our, our body, it's interesting because we're both the passenger. We feel what's going on. You know, we're kind of victims to what's going on, but we're also the pilot. We're in charge of our decisions. We decide what we eat, what we do, but often we have no clue how to fly the plane. We have no idea how our body works. So it becomes very complicated to figure out where to start. And we have all these opinions, this marketing, blah, blah. And it can be really confusing and, and, and quite daunting. So to me, learning to balance your glucose levels is like learning about the most important lever in the cockpit of the plane. It's like, if you know about this lever, you can take off, you can fly, you can land. It's like the most important thing. And it will help you get to a point where you're kind of cruising and you're like, okay, I kind of have a handle on things. My symptoms are kind of getting better. So to me, that's, that's the way to, to think about it. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously. And the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.